One of the sweetest guys ever to grace the sport helicopter biz was an amazing man by the name of B.J. Schramm. B.J. made his mark on the sport helicopter world in so many ways, but his latest and possibly his greatest contribution to aviation was a wonderful little machine called the Helicycle. We had the good fortune to run into three Helicycle drivers all at the same time who seemed to kind of enjoy flying together. Let's get some ideas from them about how the Helicycle is doing in the real world and how this aircraft is meeting their expectations. Mine's just flying great. I've, I'm the least time of the three guys here, but I've, uh, it's just been flying great. And flies 100 miles an hour, and just it's just been a, a blast. How much time do you have on your aircraft? Uh, about 50, 58 hours or so, something like that. And you, uh, you said you were a Block 4 kit, so you're one of the latest uh, out. How was the construction process? Uh, the construction, construction process is pretty straightforward. There's a couple little areas you run into. You might have a little trouble, but we've got a website. The guys are more than helpful. These guys here have been a great help to me when I was building, and it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Oh, it's, I mean, it's the best thing to open up the garage door, push the helicopter out, start it up, and fly to air shows like this. Maintenance is very little every five hours. We're doing a couple shots of grease here and there. You know, uh, I've got 170 hours on it. Uh, it took me four and a half years to build it with life and kids and, you know, all the sports and activities like that, you know, but it, it's been great. You know, we're, we're having a blast. Yeah, same experience. Um, how long have I been flying this thing? Three years? Three years. It's going on three years. I've got uh, 384 hours on mine. I'm, I'm either the highest time helicycle out there or I'm really pushing him. There's a guy in Texas that uh, that I'm trying to catch up with and he's been flying for about a year longer than me and and uh, I think I'm catching him so but it's been it's been a really good machine for me. You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The wide area augmentation system lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground based landing aids, no VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah! Wah! I want my WAS now! I was really crying there for a second. What uh, attracted you to the Helicycle and has the hype met the reality? Yeah, I, I think uh, BJ being the designer of it, one was one of my big uh, factors for choosing the Helicycle. And then, of course, having the turbine and, and of course, cost, you know, is uh, uh, it's pretty reasonable. And you just couldn't get into anything else more than probably twice the money. So the Helicycle has just been a lot of fun for the money you spend for it. Yeah, just the, the affordability and BJ's reputation with being in the helicopter in industry for his whole life you know like he used to say he used to bleed helicopters his heart and soul was in it completely uh, and it's easy to build it's fast looks good you know flies great so it's it was a pretty easy choice for me and with the rest of the ships that were out there you know some of the other competitors they were too expensive uh, but the helicycle was just right up my alley I fly aircraft for a living and uh, and so the, the biggest selling factor was this the turbine engine. I just wanted something with a turbine engine. I got a commercial helicopter rating and uh, just wanted to build time and this was the, the really the cheapest and uh, most probably safest way to, to do it. It's just the best uh, best thing going. Well I actually wanted to, wanted to fly helicopters before fixed wing and back in the 70s there was nothing out there. The R-22 wasn't out there just yet you know, uh, the Enstrom, that was way too expensive for someone just in college, you know, minimum wage job, things like that, you know. So I did the fixed wing thing for many, many years, and uh, then I finally seen BJ out at Homer Bell's with his prototype helicycle. And I knew then that's the one that I wanted. And it's taken from the 70s until now for me to, to realize that dream. And yeah, you're right, you don't see many turbine helicopters. You know, there's more now with, of course, the conversions and things like that going on, but uh, it's, Helicycle's doing great. I got, uh, I partnered up with a couple other guys on a, uh, a rotorway we bought uh, that was already uh, built, and uh, one of the partners uh, had his private helicopter rating, and uh, we're out flying around in it a little bit, and I thought, you know, I, I need to go get a helicopter rating before I really get hurt here. So I went and got my uh, helicopter rating that way, and I got it in a uh, in a um, um, Robinson, and 
the time that it took me to, to get the rating, we sold the, the uh, rotorway. And so uh, after I got the rating, I thought I need to, I need to, you know, build something and fly it to, to build my helicopter time. And, and uh, I just came across the helicycle and fell in love with it from that point on. And it's just, it's been the right decision. And I'm just glad I could make it without going through a lot of helicopters beforehand. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Jay, tell us a little bit about your machine. Well, uh, you said something before about why we pick colors. Uh, Mark Whistler over there, the guy started teasing him, calling him the bumblebee, being black and yellow over there. And originally, I was going to go with some different colors. I thought if it's going to be part of the Hoosier Hive, I'm going to have to go with some kind of bee color. So, but I've, uh, I've mine's a fourth round build. It's uh, uh, I was the sixth uh, guy in that round, and uh, I think I'm the first one to have the fourth uh, a fourth round build flying. So, um, I've got about 60 hours on it now, or just shy of that. So. But it's, uh, it's, it's been a blast. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's great to get out with these guys and just go flying around and go places you probably wouldn't normally go just or be able to get into with, you know, an airplane, obviously. So but it's just been a blast. How have you equipped yours? Uh, mine's pretty basic. Uh, I've, I went with an extra battery. Uh, and that, Part of that reason is I bought one battery that was too big, and I thought, well, I'll just put it to use and put it in the back, and that'll help that start that turbine. Uh, so I just paralleled those. But uh, my, my equipment's pretty basic. Uh, I got an idea off of Joe Lockster camp there about some wigwag lights on the front. It just makes you a lot more visible, especially in an environment like this today. And uh, mine's pretty pretty basic. And what kind of time did it take you uh, to construct it, and what kind of investment do you have in your machine? Uh, from the time I got my first part till the time I was signed off by the FAA, I believe, was about 28 months. And I'm going to say roughly a little less than 40,000 probably in the machine. I'm going to say 600 hours or so, maybe 700. I, I haven't totaled them up yet, but uh, I also did my own painting, so that, that took a little extra time. So, And that was a first time try at painting, so so that took a little longer. <laughs> and this is a, a round two build uh, machine. I actually bought the machine uh, third hand. I'm the, uh, or fourth hand actually, I'm the fourth owner of it. Uh, each owner had, had uh, done a little bit to the machine and uh, when I bought it and then I just tore it all down and started all over again uh, the uh, frame was actually a powder coated white and I, uh, I changed it to, or actually it's powder coated yellow and I changed it to black and just come up with uh, this paint scheme I, I think it uh, works out pretty good so far uh, I'm the only one that's put the spiral on the uh, uh, shaft going back to the tail rotor so I'm surprised no one else has done that yet but it, uh, it they say it looks pretty neat when it fires up but How have you equipped this aircraft? Uh, I've got a Garmin uh, 496 in it uh, now. I uh, used to have a 296, but since I got stuck in that weather that one time, I, uh, I put the 496 in it, so now I can get the uh, satellite uh, uplink for the uh, next rad weather. And once again, your uh, total time in this aircraft? Uh, it's got uh, 384 hours in it now. And if I can ask, what kind of investment do you have in this airframe? I probably don't have about uh, $40,000 invested in it. Wow, you're talking about a turbine time builder. I know guys who spent more than forty thousand getting their time in turbine. Yeah, I figured uh, uh, after really three hundred hours, it's, it's probably paid for itself two or three times. <laughs>